as contractors in the FedEx space, you will have a contract with FedEx. Uh, and so what that contract is gonna do is it's gonna lay out the exact rates that you'll be paid by FedEx. And there are going to be different points in your journey in which you're going to negotiate those rates. Now, for those of you who are new or just getting into the space, I'm gonna talk through all the scenarios and the timeframes in which you'll be negotiating and what that process is actually going to look like. And then I'm gonna give some tips at the end to help maximize the value of your negotiation. Uh, um, now, again, like I mentioned, we'll talk about line haul at the end. Uh, so let's just start by talking through the most common point in which most of you will negotiate a contract, which is at the end of a current contract term. Most contracts in the FedEx space are one year long, but you may still occasionally see a two-year contract. They are very rare now. Almost all of them are one year now. And so typically, you will have a FedEx negotiator who will reach out to you, usually a couple of months before your contract expires, and they're going to send you an email and let you know that they're beginning a 14-day process. Now, the first thing you will get are three offers, and these are essentially three versions of a contract rate structure to choose between. Uh, and these three offers are called MESOs, M-E-S-O, which stands for Multiple Equivalent Simultaneous Offers. So uh, if you're new to the FedEx space, get used to the acronyms. <laughs> so uh, these three offers are basically designed by the FedEx engineering team. And this is FedEx saying they have analyzed your territory, your market, your volume, and they've come to a value for your territory. And so that revenue figure that they've come to is what they are willing to pay you for the next year, the next 12 months. Now, in theory, each of those three offers will be exactly the same. There is a sliding scale here between the three options that you'll get for the contract. So MISO 1 has a higher percentage of your compensation tied to fixed charges, which are things like the service charge that are the same every week and don't depend on volume. And then option three is going to have the higher percentage of your compensation tied to variable charges. So things like the per package and the per stop rate. And then option two is just going to be in the middle of those, basically the, the balance between those two options. Now, FedEx will not give you the formulas that they used to calculate these numbers. Uh, the only thing that they will really show you are your historical uh, volumes for the territory and then their growth projections that they have for your volume. Other than that, they're not going to show you any of the other formulas or any of the other calculations that they got to these numbers that they're projecting and these numbers that they are assigning to your revenue for the next year. Now, really importantly, FedEx does tend to be conservative on their volume projection. Those revenue projections also do not include peak season volume. The reason FedEx does this is because if they overshot the projection, it would mean that they're paying you more than they have to all year long. They'd rather it be that they're undershooting the volumes, that they only pay you more money when they're also making more money. They're also a public company, so at the end of the day, they do want to be conservative so that they aren't missing their expectations. Because of that, we've traditionally advised going for MISO 3, which is where the higher portion of your contract is tied to variable, because what that means is if FedEx has undershot the projection and they, you do even one more stop or one more package than FedEx is projecting, then you'll make more money if more of your compensation is tied to the variable charges. For those of you that are getting express in the near future and are going to have that volume increase, it would also make sense to go towards something like MISO 3. Now, if your principal concern is consistency or if you're worried still about any kind of potential recession, you may be in the camp of leaning more towards MISO 1 or MISO 2. So those are your three options, and you'll have seven days to select one of those three options. If you do select one of them, you'll get an upfront bonus that is 1% of your revenue for the year. So on a million dollar contract, you'll get a $10,000 upfront payment for accepting one of those three MISO options within the first seven days. If you do not select one of these three MESOs, you'll then get seven additional days to go through a traditional negotiation. Now, uh, these are not typical negotiations like you may be used to in any other business. There is a negotiator involved, but they are there to make sure that the revenue doesn't move or doesn't move much, even as you change the rates and propose different options. 
So what I mean by that is that you may negotiate with FedEx to get a higher stop charge, but it'll most likely come out of your service charge or your brand charge or some other category. However, you should know that restructuring your rates, even if it doesn't change that bottom line FedEx revenue projection, can have a huge impact on how much money you actually make at the end of the year. And so if you're going through a negotiation or have one coming up and you have questions about how to maximize your specific contract, just reach out to our team and we can help. It's also important to note, I mentioned there is that early acceptance bonus if you take one of the three MISOs in the first seven days. If you do not accept one of those MISOs and go to traditional negotiation, you don't lose that money, but instead of getting it as an upfront payment, it'll get rolled into your rates. So you still get the money, it's just, it'll be factored into your different rates as opposed to getting it up front. And in a lot of scenarios, that alone can make a big difference in your bottom line at the end of the year. If you're thinking about the fact, like we talked about, where sometimes FedEx will undershoot that volume projection. So beyond that normal timeline in which you are negotiating these contracts, there are a couple of other scenarios in which you may negotiate with FedEx. The first is a renegotiation. Now, this is when you reach out to FedEx in the middle of a current contract and you ask them to renegotiate your rates. The most important thing for a renegotiation to be successful is that you need to show FedEx that there's a reason their previous rates were wrong or at least just need to be updated. So it's really critical to put as much information together as you can if you want this to work. You'll really want to create a narrative that makes it easy for your terminal to approve a renegotiation. And so that involves a few things to think through. The first is that everyone needs to get familiar with um, something called the unique characteristics of your territory. So even if you're not worried about renegotiations, you need to listen to this because this is a way to codify the various things about your territory that cost you time or money every day. You know, so if there's traffic or there's a bridge that's under construction or there's an, a stop that takes an extra two hours every day, anything that you can think of needs to be called out. And we have a template for that if that we can share with you if you reach out to us. And this one is really important because it's not just for renegotiations, but really every single year when you're coming up to the time when it's about, you know, about time to renew your contract, before you get your MISOs, you need to submit in these unique characteristics. That's going to have the highest chance of improving the revenue that FedEx assigns your territory. So whether you're talking about a renegotiation or just your normal year, you need to make sure that you're filling out these unique characteristics and getting it in the hands of your terminal manager and the negotiator every year. And as crazy as it seems, it is... I would not assume that what you sent last year is still going to be saved and that they're still going to be have it when they're looking at your contract for next year. I would still submit it every single year and, you know, illustrate anything that new that's happened, make sure to re-highlight the unique characteristics about your territory that cost you time and money. Now, for a renegotiation beyond the unique characteristics, you're going to need to show receipts, or any detail you can for expenses that have increased that you think FedEx hasn't properly taken into account. And the last thing you need to do is put a written document together that explains all of this, and then also asks for a specific revenue number. And, and I'm not talking about asking for a million dollars. I'm saying a million two hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred sixty-eight and forty-three cents. Be very specific and show that that revenue ask that you're asking for is based on those expenses and the things that have changed. Because what you wanna do is make it as easy as possible for FedEx to say yes and to approve the process. Now, there, important to note, there, this is, there's no guarantee this is gonna work. There's no guarantee that FedEx has to take a renegotiation, but it is a pathway and it is an option for you as a contractor, and it doesn't cost you anything to submit for a renegotiation. You're basically just going in the portal and submitting. So it, it is something to be aware of, and it is a tool to use during a year where you feel like you need to renegotiate mid-year. Now, the last way that you'll see a negotiation happen is if you're buying a new business. Now, if you are buying a full business from a seller, you should not have to negotiate. You'll inherit the current contract, its rates, and its length. However, if you are buying a carve-out or a piece of an existing business, you will have to negotiate again. So general timeline and, and what to think through is that you'll enter into a contract with the seller, you'll interview with FedEx, 
And then once you're approved with FedEx, they'll give you a FedEx ID, and then you're going to go through some compliance and administrative steps, and then they'll submit your proposed territory to the FedEx engineering team. So that engineering team is going to take the specific zip codes that you're buying, and they're going to designate a new contracted service area, CSA, for just those zip codes to be your new territory. Now, that process can take anywhere from two weeks up to six weeks or more. So it and it is also really difficult for us to accelerate this process because the, the FedEx engineering team is basically a black box. But if those problems really start, you know, if it's been more than six weeks or even if it's getting close to six weeks, let us know. Sometimes there are levers we can pull to get it out of engineering. And then once you have the CSA designated, you'll get those three MISOs, just as what we talked about before. Critically, the seller will also get three MISOs. Because if they're buying, you know, if they're selling a piece of their territory, that means their new territory looks different too. And both parties have to agree to their new contracts or that deal is going to be delayed. And you usually get about two weeks to agree to those neg negotiations like I talked about before. So those are the three scenarios where you would really negotiate. Now, I've mentioned a couple of things to be thinking about when you come up on a negotiation, but just a reminder again. Uh, so MISO 1 is generally what you go for if you are either expecting express volume increases or you're just looking to maximize your profitability. MISO 1 and 2 are where you go to maximize consistency or to minimize the risk from a recession in volume. And then a traditional negotiation is, is more if you know your territory and know how to manage the negotiator in the process. It can be really hard to do traditional negotiations if you're buying a business for the first time just because you won't really know any of those unique characteristics that I talked about before. You won't really know what's the most important for your territory. So I often find that when you're first buying a business, it can be easier to just select one of the three MISOs. Now, no matter what, every year you need to be filling out and submitting those unique characteristics to ensure that FedEx is properly accounting for all the expenses that are affecting your territory and your market. And, and lastly, the, the revenue bottom line number on the MISO model can be misleading, especially when you're comparing it to previous years. And so it's really important to properly analyze those differences to see how much the contract has improved or declined. So if you're struggling to analyze those metrics and, and process a new contract, reach out to us because recently I have seen plenty of contracts that looked like a decline in revenue, but actually were better than the year before. And we are happy to help in all of those scenarios to help you think through those. I promised at the beginning I'll, is that I'd come back to it quickly. So the last thing here is the line hall contracts. So again, we have a whole webinar on this uh, that Danny and I, I did a couple of weeks ago, if you want to see more detail. But these are not negotiated contracts. But basically what happens is every August, FedEx begins a blackout period in which they take all the line hall contracts, they increase the rates, and then they just tell you what the new rates are. There's no negotiation. They just update the rates across the country at the exact same time. And we're actually in the blackout period right now. And that ends this year on Sunday, August 27th. So we will see those new rates for line hall very soon. Now, the, just the last thing to leave you with, uh, negotiations aren't anything to be afraid of. It's just important to know when they occur, what you should be looking for, and how long that process takes so that you can be successful.